This is a photo of a moment. It's in large part about this boy's expression. Then just look at this baby lamb. This here is his sister. She's sort of mirroring his action. Compositionally, there are layers here as our eye travels from the front of the frame towards the back. And the photo was made in a pretty nice setting. Was this photo the result of being in the right place at the right time? In part, yes, but if you think that's all there is to creating a photo like this, well, then you are very mistaken. There's much, much more to it, and that's what this video is about. So let me take you back a little to give this photo some context. This boy here is Benjamin. I met him and his mum, Olga Rincon, along a road while I was driving. They were hailing a ride, I picked them up and dropped them off at their home, which turned out to be near my hotel. Later, I met the daughter, Isabella, and soon the Rincon family and I became friends. They started inviting me to their finca. That's the word for a countryside home in Colombia. I was working on a parallel film project, so I was in the area for at least a month and had time to spare in between. We spent a lot of time together, eating together, hanging out in all kinds of situations, even going on a short train journey. Soon, documenting the lives of the Rincon family became a project in itself. I would bring my camera with me virtually everywhere. And at times, no one would even notice it. In the photographer's mindset, my new educational resource that I've been talking about, I dedicated a whole section to this project. I talked about the various details and nuances which were key to creating a powerful series of photos of the family. Of course, there's much more in this resource. All of the info that you need is in the link in the description. Anyway, what's the point of sharing with you my story with that Incones? It will become clear in just a bit. First, I want to mention something else that's important. I think that sometimes we as photographers tend to take and take from the amazing people that we meet. And I don't necessarily mean take something material, but you know, take their time, their energy, or sometimes we do take, we accept their kindness and hospitality and we don't know how to repay it. And uh, I'm really not a fan of this, but sometimes photographers will repay with money. I prefer to repay with something genuine from my side. I mean, if you're friends with somebody, do you just pay them for their friendship, for the special memories? Of course not. Well, I would think, of course not. You might invite them for lunch or for dinner, but that's not really about the money. That's about just showing that you care and about the experiences. And there are different experiences which you can have that are absolutely free. We had a fun time going on some little adventures on that train ride. We had a bonfire and cooked a big meal and I tried to help however I could. I transported a baby sheep late at night because there was no other transport. I'd help Olga bring firewood from the finca to the house. One time we drove around looking for the family's donkey, Cleopatra, who liked to escape every now and then. So more adventures really. And one thing that became almost a regular was that I would help Olga bring food from town to her sheep at the finca or her countryside home. Coincidentally, it was one of the times that we took the food to the sheep that led to this photo. The setting of the place where Olga would throw the food to the sheep was pretty photogenic, with the hills and the town of Monkey in the distance. So I kind of bookmarked it in my mind. This whole animal feeding ritual had photographic potential, I thought, but usually the sheep would eat the food quickly and they'd scatter all over the place. And anyway, I wanted something more than just the sheep against a nice backdrop. Then one day we picked up the kids from school, uh, got the food as usual, headed off to the finca, and on this day things worked out in my favor photographically. But let's pull back just a little bit. Have you been picking up on some very important keys here? It's nothing technical, but these keys are what makes the kind of image that we're talking about here possible. The first and most important key here is that I established a bond with the Rincon family. I didn't distance myself. Instead, I was just genuine. I helped out and looked for ways to enjoy our time together to the fullest. The other key is that although I almost always had my camera with me, I put the friendship and the willingness to help first. 
and ironically this actually gave me more photo opportunities. Finally, I was in photography mode most of the time. I was assessing the photographic potential everywhere I went. So Olga feeding the sheep on an elevation that was overlooking the hills and the town got my attention. So when we came with the kids, I was ready if something was to materialize. And actually, these are all the photos that I made at the place on that day. So it's not like I just turned up there, got lucky and clicked a frame or two and got my image. No, I was really exploring and experimenting with my camera. I go into a deeper explanation and analysis of what worked, what didn't and how I came to this image in the extended version of this video. The extended version of the video is part of my new resource, The Photographer's Mindset, and this is actually the last week of the launch and the last chance to get it at a substantially reduced price. So if you're interested, don't wait too long. But anyway, what's important to mention is that without all the keys that I've just talked about, without our bond, without the family being totally at ease with my camera, without having access and consent to photograph any time that I was around, this moment would not have materialized. I would have never even come to this spot. There's one big question that might be on your mind. Uh, in fact, I think it should be on your mind. Can this kind of situation be emulated? Can it be replicated? Or was this just a case where I made friends and coincidentally things worked out photographically as well? Well, I'll tell you what I think about this towards the end of the video, but for now, I want to go into a bit of depth and take a look at what is it that makes this photo powerful. And then I'll talk about the settings and the gear that I used. So what is it that works in this final photo that I chose? As I mentioned right in the beginning of the video, this photo in large part is about the moment. That includes the expression on Benjamin's face, the fact that his sister is mirroring his action. This creates some repetition and a sort of a rhythm. Of course, this little guy's expression too, there's something human and kind of humorous about it. There's a compositional element. This flock of sheep, they're pretty much together, so compositionally they're seen as one cohesive element. The composition is clean, uh, there's no chaos. Just a little later, the sheep were actually all over the place and it wasn't even worth shooting this scene anymore. Then there's the color palette. There aren't too many colors. It's a limited color palette. If there was a building or a house here or here, and if it was bright, your attention would be taken away from what's important from all this. Even the brightest, the most loud color here is not out of balance. It's basically a variation of all of these colors. So this works well in the sense that we do probably pay most attention to Benjamin and to this little lamb, but the eye is not constantly called back here. It still wanders off to explore the rest of the frame. I actually have a whole video on color in photography. So if you want to get really deep into the role of color in photography, then I highly, highly recommend that you watch this video. Now the final element that I also already touched on, there are layers here. This here is the front layer, this the middle layer, and this whole area you could basically classify as the background layer. Our eye travels through the frame, from here, to here, to here, and back. The eye is encouraged to explore the frame. The layers create a sense of depth and they make the image more engaging. This image would not have been quite as interesting if everything were more or less on the same plane and looked more flat. So these are the keys that make the photo work. Now to the gear and to the settings that I used to make this photo. Firstly, it may come as a surprise to some of you that the camera that I used for this photo was my tiny Lumix GX80. Together with a small Lumix Leica 15mm f1.7 prime lens, this was a really compact setup that I could easily take with me virtually everywhere, virtually all the time. Now, since the GX80 is a micro four thirds camera, the 15mm focal length is actually equivalent to 30mm on a full frame camera. Hence, you don't see some pretty intense distortion, which you would have seen on a 15mm full frame lens. 
The aperture here was set to f2.2. On a full frame system, this would have been equivalent to f4.4. I closed the iris just a little because I wanted a bit of depth of field here in the background. I was shooting on aperture priority as I most often do, but in addition to the aperture, I always set my ISO. And here, the ISO was set to 100. There was enough light here to allow me a high shutter speed of 1 16th hundred of a second. This enabled me to freeze the moment and to avoid any camera shake blur or motion blur. So here is my gear and all of my settings and the photograph again. And now to that big question. Can you emulate, can you replicate my approach here? Everything that sort of happened that enabled me to make photos of the Rincon family. Some of you might even ask, should you befriend somebody to make photos of them? I will say that honestly, in my case, it was a wonderful coincidence. I never expected that I would end up with all of these images. However, in my opinion, there is nothing really wrong with making friends with somebody to make photos of them. Because, well, this is what I think. If you're a decent human being, even if photography was your initial aim, the friendship will actually sort of take over. As long as you're open and you're not just sort of using the person or people, your relationship will inevitably develop into something more. And you'll end up with photos and with new friends. At least that's what's always happened with me. Okay, that's it. Remember, this is the last week of the launch special. The link with all of the details is in the description below and goodbye for now.